University of Science and Technology of China, who's replacing Chao Yang Lu, who couldn't make it. Um, but he's going to talk about boson sampling with deterministic and indistinguishable single photons. Let's go ahead. Yeah, thank you for your introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. So this is a talk of Professor Chao Yang Lu, uh, and uh, I'm his student, uh, as his representative, to give it here on um, boson sampling with deterministic and indistinguishable single photons. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for uh, providing us with uh, such a uh, nice opportunity. Uh, and uh, um, I'd like to uh, show my acknowledgement to my mentor, Chao Yang, uh, and uh, to Professor Pan, who is the director of our Quantum Research Center, and to Professor Sun Hofling, uh, who is our collaborator, uh, and to Meet, who is a PhD advisor of my mentor in the audience. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, to those hardworking and intelligent group members. Uh, so, um, today uh, the theme of the talk is boson sampling. So, what is it and why do we want to do this? Uh, here is a roadmap to quantum computation provided by Google, uh, which we believe to be applicable to many other physical systems. And you can note that uh, there is a near term milestone uh, named quantum supremacy. Uh, we have to admit that uh, this name is a little confusing. Uh, I mean, uh, when news about this term comes from Google or IBM, um, my mentor and some other professors need to tell our government not to panic. Uh, this is not an atomic bomb, but uh, just an a essential step towards scalable quantum computation. So there are two candidates for quantum supremacy. Um, the first is boson sampling for photonic system, and the other is random circuit sampling for superconducting system. And in our um, solid state quantum photonic lab, we focus on boson sampling. So what is boson sampling? Uh, here is a short introduction. Um, uh, roughly speaking, boson sampling is a quantum analog of bottom board game. Uh, but here, what we input uh, are not classical balls, but uh, groups of indistinguishable single photons. Uh, and due to the multi-photon interference in the inferometer, uh, the, distrib the uh, distribution of the output is not as simple as a bottom board game, but actually it is so complicated that uh, it is related to a sharp peak complete complexity. Uh, that is, uh, the calculation of the permanent of a unitary matrix and that matrix is related to uh, the sub-matrix of your uni unitary transformation of your interferometer. So uh, we know that uh, for a classical computer, the calculation of the permanent scales exponentially with the number of the single photons. Uh, this is the best classical uh, algorithm for this purpose. Uh, but for a quantum boson sampler, um, such a such a step just scales polynomially with the number of the single photons. So that is why we believe it's a good candidate for demonstrating quantum supremacy. And uh, so we know to do boson sampling, we need groups of uh, identical um, single photons. Uh, so the first thing we need to achieve is a nearly perfect single photon source. So here is a checklist for this. Uh, you can see there are four points. Um, first, deterministic generation. This means that we want to have a push button switch of our single point, so a single point source. And second, uh, we want a high purity. This means that uh, the single photons we get should be pure single photons with a vanishing probability of multi photon. And third, indistinguishability. So this means that the single photons we get should be quantum mechanically indistinguishable to each other. And uh, we also want high collection efficiency. So we need to collect these single photons emitted into a single spatial mode efficiently. And what I want to address here is that just like the um, loophole-free bio test, uh, we need to fulfill all these points simultaneously, but not separately. And uh, let's go through these concepts one by one in more detail. Uh, first, uh, what do we mean by being single? So here is a pictorial illustration of this concept. Uh, and you can see that the photon stream uh, on the top, uh, for this photons, they are more separated from each other, and they look like being single. 
but how do we quantify this concept? So uh, this can be done using the second order correlation function introduced by Global. And uh, experimentally, we can measure it with the famous HBT setup. So uh, to be more exact, for single photon streams, uh, it's um, G2, or the second order correlation function, goes to zero. And for Poisson distribution, like a laser, its G2 goes to one. And for thermal distribution, its G2 goes to two. Uh, another important concept here is indistinguishability. So we know that in quantum computation, uh, we want qubits to talk to each other. But the problem is that we know that for photons, they do not directly interact with each other. So how should we deal with this? Uh, the answer lies in exchange interaction. For example, the whole Mandel inference, uh, when two indistinguishable photons enter a beam splitter, they will always emit uh, out of uh, one output port together. So we can use such a multi-photon interference um, pattern to make the photons talk to each other. And uh, now we have already have some basic ideas on the indistinguishable single photons. So we can now check our toolbox to see how we can really achieve it. So uh, a mature workhorse, a mature workhorse in quantum optics is spontaneous parametric down conversion, uh, which has been introduced uh, in several talks yesterday. Uh, so what I want to mention here is that by careful design of the, of the source, uh, actually we can generate entangled photon pairs from this process. And uh, that, is, uh, that is a branch that our group works on. So uh, in 2012, we achieved eight photon entanglement, uh, which uh, was mentioned yesterday by Mark. Uh, and uh, in 2000, 2016, uh, we achieved a 10 photon entanglement. And you can see that here, when one improvement is that uh, the, output, uh, the, the output mode, uh, the output spatial mode is more close to the single, uh, single mode fiber. So we can get higher collection efficiency. And uh, actually, this year, uh, we are working on a 12 photon entanglement and it has been done earlier this year and it is a paper in preparation um, and uh, here the picture shows you the spectrum correlation of the two photons from the pile and you can see that in our 12 photon entanglement source such a correlation is removed so this means that uh, we can make these photons more indistinguishable uh, between each other Oh, so SPDC uh, is a good, uh, but there is a remaining problem for it is that uh, it is a deterministic gener generation. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the only remaining problem for the source. Uh, but we can still do a lot of interesting things with SPDC. Uh, sorry. Like uh, scattershot boson sampling, which is a different boson sampling scheme from the original one, but it's still classically hard. And we can also apply multiplexing technique with the uh, SPDC. So um, in our lab, we see an acceleration in the number of entangled, uh, in the number of entangled photons this year. So maybe we can make SPDC great again. <laughs> <laughs> well, so now we can turn to other uh, single photon emitters. Um, people have trapped ions and uh, neutral atoms. Uh, they are good and physically beautiful, but uh, they are too complicated. So maybe we can turn to the solid state platform. Uh, and uh, in our lab, uh, we focus on quantum dot. So uh, today uh, there has been several talks on quantum dot, and uh, uh, I just want to mention that uh, the quantum dot in our lab refers to the defects on a two-dimensional material. And the key is that it behaves like a two-level system. So it can be used as a single photon emitter with very high quantum efficiency. Uh, and usually, we make some nanostructures on this quantum dot. Uh, like this, we build a, a micropilot cavity on it. So it looks uh, like this. And uh, there has been a lot of work on quantum dots, expecting, uh, expecting to use it for quantum computation. Um, but there is a problem. Uh, lots of work cannot be used for multi, 
from time uh, experiments live. Uh, the answer is that uh, there are two major obstacles, uh, indistinguishability and uh, collection efficiency. So first, um, indistinguishability. There are two major factors that reduce the indistinguishability. The first is the homogeneous broadening, um, homogeneous broadening caused by the, elect uh, by the electric field in fluctuation when the quantum dot is at its excited state. So uh, the solution is uh, we can make some cavity on the quantum dot to induce the Purcell effect, which will reduce the lifetime of the excited state. And uh, the, second, uh, pro the second factor is that uh, years ago, the predominant excitation method is a ball band excitation. So that means um, we, uh, we, use, we use pulsed laser to excite our quantum dot from its ground state to a higher level, and then it relax to the excited level. And you can see that uh, such a relaxing process induces a time jitter. So this time jitter will reduce our momentum visibility. And uh, in this situation, the best visibility we achieved is just uh, uh, 70%. So our resolution is that we develop a method called post-resonance uh, post resonance fluorescence method. So it means, it means that we accept our form dot resonantly. So this will make us get rid of the time jitter. And uh, uh, we know that for resonant excitation, we can see Rabi oscillation for the pulse excitation in a time domain, or we can see the model triplet in the spectral domain. Well, if you use continuous wave excitation. So this is exactly what we <coughs> see in, in, in our experiment, they are raw data. So, and uh, with this method, uh, what we want to achieve is a higher in indistinguishability. And uh, for our first work, uh, it's, uh, it's a work in 2013, uh, we achieved an indistinguishability to 97, 97%. And uh, uh, later, we use other techniques, and we once re reached a uh, visibility up to 99%. So now, uh, another problem on this checklist is the collection efficiency. So the problem arises from that there will be perfect reflection at the interface between our material and the air. So our solution. Uh, so the solution is to build some cavity uh, on this one dot, and this will collect the emitted single photons into a single spatial mode very efficiently. Uh, it just looks like this one. It, it is a micropillar cavity. And uh, now we can put all these techniques together into one quantum dot to see uh, what, is the, what is the performance. Uh, here is the how, how the quantum dot looks like. It's, it's in this micropillar cavity. And uh, with this cavity, first we achieve a very high collection efficiency. You can see the single photon emitted, uh, most of them are collected into this single spatial mode. And with this cavity, we also have a personal effect. So you can see the left time of our one dot drops from this red curve to this blue curve when it is resonant. So, uh, with, with this method, we can also achieve a Rabi oscillation. So what we do is, to, is that we fix our laser power as a pi pulse. So we can, uh, we can get determini deterministic generation of our single photons when you just apply a pulse to laser. And uh, this is our indistinguishability. It can reach 98%. And uh, actually, uh, this indistinguishability remains above 90% even after 1,000 single photons. Uh, besides, we also can achieve a very low um, G2. So it is a very low multi-photon probability, and it is less than 1%. So now we have had a nearly perfect single photon source, and we want to use it to boson sampling. So what we do is we apply the demultiplexing method on it, and uh, we can generate groups of indistinguishable single photons to input them into our interferometer. 
And uh, uh, another key element in the boson sampling is interferometer. Um, a lot of previous experiments suffer from the low trend, uh, the low efficiency. So it will just be up to 30%. And in our experiment, we designed a new interferometer uh, that looks like this. Uh, it is very small and uh, extent integrated to some extent. And uh, it is very stable, and it has a very high transmission rate. That is 99%. So with this interferometer, uh, we performed a boson sampling experiment last year. Uh, and based on nature of photonics, we, 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 we have this 9 times 9 interferometer, and we input 3, 4, 5 photons into it. And uh, this is the overview of our whole setup. Uh, you can see that first we have a, a single single photon source coming from the quantum dot, and then we demultiplex this single photon stream, and then we input that into an interferometer, and then we measure the output distribution. So this work was selected as the OPN Optics in 2017. <laughs> And this is our experimental data. Um, you can see that the black box uh, is the theoretical prediction of the distribution, and uh, the the colored column shows uh, us the our experimental data. So this experiment, in this experiment, uh, our boson sample runs 24,000 times faster than all previous photon experiments, and uh, uh, it is also the first time that we can implement four and five photon boson sampling with a single photon input. Uh, so for our next steps, um, actually our current source can support a 12 photon boson sampling uh, in a 60 times 60 interferometer. Um, and we are just in, oh, well, we are just uh, waiting for <coughs> the detectors. And uh, we expect to, to get, get an improvement in the brightness of our quantum dot by a factor of two. And with this, we, will, we, we can do 20 photon boson sampling on a 120 square interferometer. And the, such an experiment will have a Hilbert space dimension of 10 to 22. So maybe we will also plan for some uh, boson sampler on code, something like that. Uh, so uh, here is a is a recent uh, recent paper on archive that uh, contains a comparison between state of the art single photon sources. So you can see that um, there are two sources, two quantum dot sources boxed in red. So they are ours, and uh, uh, you can see that they are the best to reach the high repetition rate and high efficiency, low G two, high indistinguishability and high boson sampling rate simultaneously. Uh, and uh, uh, there is also a French group who, whose uh, work is reported, a sim similar report. Sim similar work is reported, and uh, as a talk before mint. So uh, another uh, next step of us is that we want to do boson sampling with photon loss. So actually, we have already have a first work on this. It is our cap. It was recently accepted by PIL. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, we, we have we have we have labs in uh, on quantum dot and boson sampling in Hefei, and uh, uh, we also have the lab in Shanghai. So, welcome to visit us, and uh, that's all. Thank you. So you said you, you expect to increase the brightness of the quantum dots by a factor of two. Yeah. And how did you how did you plan to do that? Uh, actually, uh, our you know uh, our quantum dot recently we uh, one one factor that reduced the brightness is that we need to element the background of the laser. So uh, this will induce. Uh, so that will, what we do to animate, animate the laser background is that we use a cross path polarization method. So this will uh, this will decrease our brightness by a factor of two. So we 
have been trying to uh, developing some new techniques to overcome this obstacle. Yeah, it's still we are still exploring on this topic. Uh, can I ask, I guess one of the limitations is how efficiently you can uh, demultiplex in time all of the photons from you your... You mean the demultiplexing rate? Yeah, the, the pop, well actually I was interested more in what's the uh, loss through this whole system at the moment and as you scale this to larger photon numbers, how does this uh, loss scale? Is this one no, of the limitations? It, it, it scales also exponentially. Yeah. <coughs> so and what is the loss now? Right now? Uh, actually, our uh, single point source has a system efficiency about 33%, and our detector has an efficiency about 32%. So the loss is just uh, 0 0.33 times 0 0.32. That's our efficiency. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. Okay, so let's thank Carl again.